Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a black green enchantment deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features a ton of new cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. It's kind of a mid-rangey good stuff deck, with the overarching theme being enchantment synergies, and if we separate the enchantments from the non-enchantments, it kind of highlights some of the build-around cards in our deck that are in the non-enchantment section. At one mana, Generous Visitor, a 1-1 spirit, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, a great payoff that can quickly get out of hand. Then at 2 mana there's Kami of Transience, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two spirit with Trample, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell put a plus one plus one counter on it, and at the beginning of each end step, if an enchantment was put into our graveyard from the battlefield this turn, we can return the Kami from our graveyard to our hand, so a powerful recursive threat. And then most importantly, we have Tatsunari Toad Rider, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary human ninja, saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, if we don't control a creature named Kami, create Kami, a legendary 3-3 three, three black and green frog creature token, with the ability saying whenever we cast an enchantment spell, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So this gives us a great board presence, especially if we can play Tatsunari followed by an enchantment in the same turn. And then for one and a green in this deck, Tatsunari Toad Rider and target frog we control cannot be blocked this turn except by creatures with flying or reach, so another nice evasive ability to help us close out the game, but for the most part we're happy generating a bunch of 3-3 frogs, maybe trading them off or sacrificing them somehow, and then make additional 3-3s on the following turn, or we can slowly start draining the opponent as we play more enchantments. So these are some of the non-enchantment payoffs. Now let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out at 1 mana with 2 copies of Dockside Chef, a 1-2 enchantment creature that for 1 and a black can sacrifice an artifact or creature to draw a card, so that can synergize quite nicely with cards like Kami of Transience or the 3-3 token we get from Tatsunari, as we can keep sacrificing them and getting them back over and over. Then we also have two copies of Warlock class, which is mostly here as just being a one mana enchantment to trigger our various synergies, so we can potentially double spell and get immediate value from Tatsunari, so if the opponent kills it, we're at least left with a 3 3 frog token. And then Warlock class says at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life, so this can also passively drain the opponent. For two mana, we can level it up to look at the top three cards of our library, putting one of them into our hand, the rest into our graveyard, where we can maybe later get them back. And then on level 3 for 7 mana, doesn't happen every game, but can be a nice finisher that can represent a lot of extra damage out of nowhere, saying at the beginning of our end step, each opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they lost this turn, so essentially doubles our damage output, so that in combination with maybe an evasive Tatsunari can represent a lot of damage. Then we also have two copies of a ranger class, making a 2-2 wolf token on the first level. Then we can level it up to put plus one plus one counters on attacking creatures, and on level 3 lets us cast creatures of the top of our deck. Then we have two copies of the Jukai Visionary, a 1-3 that we can pick back up for two mana if we tap it, and then we can mill the top four cards of our library, putting a land among them onto the battlefield tapped, and then we can also later channel the Visionary for double X, double green, discarding it to return X, target a non-legendary card from our graveyard to our hand. So that also plays well with all the self-mill of Warlock class and our next enchantment, Teachings of the Kirin, which on chapter 1 will mill three cards, putting a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token into play. Then on the second chapter we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and finally transforms into an enchantment creature that when it attacks can either exile a creature card to make a 1-1 token, or exile a non-creature card from a graveyard to put a plus one plus one counter somewhere. And all these plus one counters that we can generate from teachings of the Kirin, or Ranger class, even Visitor, Kami, and the Defense the Temple that we'll see in a second, are all ways to get our creatures out of range of our own Meat Hook Massacre, so it can still be an effective board wipe, giving all creatures minus X minus X, but we can hopefully save our more important creatures by putting more plus one counters on them, and then once the Massacre is in play, it will slowly drain the opponent as our creatures die, and gain life as the opponent's creatures die, so an awesome card in any deck, and great against aggressive strategies. 
Then at 3 mana, we alluded to Jugan defends the temple on chapter 1, makes a 1 1 monk token that taps for green. On chapter 2, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures, and on the final chapter, transforms into Remnant of the Rising Star, a 2 2 enchantment creature with flying, saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can pay X mana, and if we do, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on that creature. So it's kind of like all our creatures turn into Wildborn Preservers of sort. And then as long as we control five or more modified creatures, meaning in this case creatures with plus one counters on them, then the remnant has plus five, plus five, and trample. So a ton of synergy there too with our visitor, potentially distributing a ton of counters, and of course the saga on chapter two as well. Then we have two copies of Gloom Shrieker as a 2-1 enchantment creature with menace that when it enters a battlefield returns target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. And then if the Gloom Shrieker dies, we exile it. So just a nice value creature that gives us a bit of card selection over the graveyard, plays well with some of the self-mill cards like Warlock Class, Teachings, and Visionary, and also plays well with Binding the Old Gods, one of the most important cards in the deck, as it's our main removal spell on chapter 1, destroying target and non-land permanent and opponent controls, then lets us search up a forest on chapter 2, and finally gives our creatures death touch until end of turn, also cannot be underestimated as we do end up with a few smaller creatures, and those can maybe still get in for a bit of damage, especially relevant if we also have a Meat Hook Massacre that will drain the opponent, maybe combined with a level 3 on Warlock class can help us close out the game, and then once Binding hits the graveyard we can also get it back with Gloom Shrieker or Visionary. And then one of the advantages of playing a two-color deck, as opposed to maybe playing white for the two-mana Jukai Naturalist, which would otherwise be quite synergistic, is that we get to play the full playset of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as a powerful creature land, turns into a 3-3 with Menace that can exile stuff from the opponent's graveyard. Then of course our one of Legendary Lands, with the Abandoned Mire getting stuff back from our graveyard, and Boseju potentially dealing with artifacts, enchantments, or non-basic lands. And then a couple basics, of course plenty of forests to go with Binding, and then Pathway and Death Camp Glade to round out our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Up against a red-white with an initiate. Well, against an aggro deck, I don't mind the double visitor starts, assuming we can pick up some more enchantments. And then, might be able to get our creatures large enough to survive our own massacre. Turn to Aspirants, not what we wanted to see, however. That's gonna make it difficult to uh, keep their creatures small enough. Especially on the draw, but binding could be an answer to it. Double aspirants. Yeah, that card is powerful. Probably want to double block that aspirant here. And then binding can eventually deal with the initiate instead. Toad Rider's kind of nice. So yeah, the plan's gonna be binding, probably initiate, and then massacre. Hopefully, can catch the aspirin before it's too late. Adlin also problem, so we might have to pivot to deal with Adlin instead. Aspirin attacking is interesting. But I'll take it. So, yeah, interesting spot. Think killing the initiates reasonable. Massacre might be able to deal with Adeline more easily, as well as all the tokens she provides. Partners, yeah, that's a good one. Trying to double block Adlin now. So her opponent passes. And what's my plan? So next turn I could 
Massacre for three. I guess we can go Visitor into Visionary. And then put a counter on Toad Rider. So it doesn't die to a Massacre for three. And then the 3-3 three, three Frog can jump if needed. Still happy to trade for Adlin, given the chance. Fowler stands actually killing the Toad Rider is unfortunate. So does a frog want to chump? Or I can chump with a visitor to hold off partners for an extra turn, next turn pick a visionary and then go for a massacre. Still gonna need to draw an answer for Adlin, of course. Defense the temple could generate more mana. So that might still be worth playing. Could play Kami to chum block as well. And then go for Visionary. And then hold Jugan Defense the Temple until after. And we get to return another Kami as well. But now Cave is gonna get busy. And it's probably going to be the recipient of those plus one counters. No, nope, they go for the token instead. That works. Probably don't want to kill their creatures if possible, so my Meathook Massacre gains me more life. So I might want to jump here. And then I guess blocking is still fine. Okay, so we can massacre for three and then still play a Kami afterwards. And then the plan is going to be to channel back another binding to answer Adlin, hopefully. So hoping for a land off the top. Toad Rider also buys some time. And then next turn we can channel back Binding and play it thanks to the Monk. Or 3-3 three, three Toad can jump. And then it's going to be a race against these caves. And then I should probably attack with a Toad Rider here. Keep up the pressure. And 
Next turn we get a flyer, which can chump if needed. Chaplain could chump, although Toad Rider can make our frog in itself unblockable. So very tense game. As we fall to five. Okay, so if I were to activate Toad Rider, can hit him for seven. And then I have five mana left. Getting close to killing them. Got a couple of camis in the graveyard waiting to get back. Uh, visionary could channel. Nothing amazing to return. So maybe we activate Warlock class. Let's see if I play Visionary, they go to 9. Still not quite enough. Find a Ranger class. Probably the play. And then I'm probably not going to pump it. Just so we can activate Toad Rider. And hit for seven. And then we should be able to survive. Brutal Cathar goes for Toad Rider. But they're still in trouble here. Don't have the mana to block with the cave. And the remnants will be able to get there. Oof, what a close game. Meatook Massacre also gained quite a bit of life this game to keep us alive while we jumped Adlin. And really getting to see a lot of the different synergies in action. Creatures gain Death Touch. And yeah, the Rising Star can cross the finish line here. Cave's gonna be tapped. And our opponent takes two. Although I'm sure we could have figured out a way to win with uh, Frog as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one, probably Visitor into a couple options on two. Up against a Black Sacrifice deck, let's see which variety. Double Eye Twitch for now. Could be Mono Black. Still going for Ranger class. And Visitor can pump itself to attack pass to 1 1. Night Witch learning for environmental sciences. Get a land. Do have double binding to deal with planeswalkers at least. And then we're hoping to find some of our recursion. Opponent appears to be black-white, can have access to some exile effects, so that's more effective against something like our Kami. For now we can try and get some of our cards out of range from an opposing Meat Hook Massacre. So, could go for Warlock class, put counter on the wolf, and then level up Ranger class instead of playing teachings. So we're not overextending. That's one way to go about it. And then we're not putting all our eggs in one basket with a generous visitor, at least. Could also just put the counter on visitor itself right now. Now let's go for the wolf token.
opponent gets bus summoning to buy time. Next turn I can level up Ranger class once again, or maybe level up Warlock class. Still play a two drop. It's a bit of a balancing act between applying enough pressure so that our opponent feels forced to maybe cast a sweeper and so we can kill a planeswalker once it shows up, but also not committing too much into what could be a meat hook massacre or various other sweepers. Finding our own copy of Massacre also going to be important to clear a bunch of tokens at some point. There's a pest summoning. Okay, so now if I were to attack with both I can still put a plus one counter on visitors so it doesn't trade. And then probably leveling up Warlock class over Ranger class. So it's less of a target of uh, posing a removal. Can maybe level that up first before deciding what to do next. And yeah, Kami going to the graveyard is a good thing, so probably take the visionary. And then I can play that before attacking. And then I could still put a counter on Visitor, so it doesn't die to a Meat Hook Massacre for a 3 next turn. Opponent double chumps. Of course, could also just see a Doomscar instead, which would be unfortunate, but at least we still have our class enchantments to provide a bit of advantage and the Hive to keep up the pressure. Alright, Lion comes into play tapped, so don't need to fear Doomscar. It's going to be an Adgar instead. Okay, so can attack past Edgar pretty easily, and if they jump I can finish off the transformed version with my binding. Kind of want to trigger a Generous Visitor so I can have two 5-5s five that are attacking, but that means I wouldn't be able to binding the uh, transformed Edgar this turn. It's probably still fine. So I can maybe play Teachings pre-combats. Pump the Wolf. An attack. And then the plan is to pick up Visionary over playing Kami of Transients. So both are 5-5, five five, still out of range from a potential Massacre. Opponent is jumping. So next turn we can deal with the uh, Coffin, perhaps. Could also use Boseju, I suppose, but don't feel like ramping my opponent. That goes against our plan of playing around Meat Hook Massacre. And we'll just pick up the Visionary. Alright, Wedding Announcements makes another 1-1. One, one. And a Bank Buster for card draw. That one's fine. Pick up Visionary. I should have gone for Hive there since it comes into play tapped anyway. And then... Let's see, we picked up a Meat Hook Massacre. That's promising. Could Massacre for 1. Shrinks down my two creatures, but deals with all the 1-1s. One Doesn't leave enough mana to do anything else too relevant. So probably fine to let them jump for another turn. Assuming they're not playing Blood on the Snow since they don't have any snow lands. And then next turn we can wipe the board. So for now, I don't mind Visionary to re-trigger Visitor. Attack. And could also send a 1-1, one, one, put a counter on it if I want to. Assuming they're gonna chum the 6-6s six anyway. And destroy the coffin. Opponent's at 12. We're getting close to just leveling up Warlock class to deal more damage to.
opponent passes with maybe spot removal at the ready. Alright, they're gonna mastery the wolf for two. And make a 1-1. One, one. So I can meat hook for one, see what happens. Put a counter on my own Kirin. And attack. And then a close call between Tapped Hive. Probably want to use a Visionary again. Could add a Kami to the board. Although, kind of feels like they need a Sweeper here anyway. So it wouldn't really make a big difference. Opponent gets drained for one. Bankbuster draws. And our opponent is in a bit of a squeeze here. Getting pressured from all angles. Maybe a Farewell could still save them, exiling all creatures and enchantments alike. Although that still leaves Hive as a threat, so I guess that's also a reason not to play the Kami. It's gonna be a Spirited Companion instead. That one's probably not enough. Shambling Ghasts. And Vanishing Verse exiles my visitor. Lots of Tatsunaris in the graveyard. Okay, my creatures gain Death Touch. If they double block Hive, they're still dead to the Warlock class plus Meat Hook Massacre. So that seems good enough. Although I can also clear an extra blocker with Binding for what it's worth. And attack. Can put a boss one counter on itself. All right, that should do it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn one, probably go for Warlock class, so turn two we can level it up. And then if we're up against a creature deck, Meat Hook Massacre is gonna be great. Red-white points in that direction. And binding seems like the pick, and then Kami we can maybe get back from the graveyard at some point. Turn to Aspirants is a type of card we won't always be able to kill with Meetook Massacre, as it can easily get out of range. So for now let's play Jugan Defends the Temple. And then we may use Binding to clean up the Aspirant instead. Opponent rips it apart, fair enough. So there goes that plan. Take three. But we do get back our Kami as an enchantment got destroyed. Another Kami. So I don't mind double Kami into Chef, and then we can set a Binding for next turn. So 
Yeah, that looks good. Opponent has got a Frostbind in response. Warlock class drains for one. So we can potentially sacrifice some of our creatures to the chef before casting Meat Hook Massacre. Another rip apart deals with Kami. Aspirant, now a 4 4, probably time to binding it. Another Kami to draw, so we can play that first. And then as soon as we lose one of our enchantments, we get back double Kami. The chef can potentially sacrifice itself. So, a lot of options. Still have our Meat Hook Massacre. As now a pacifism hits our Kami. Easy target for the Dockside Chef to sacrifice. Get a forest. And, uh, yeah, probably start here. Picked up a Teachings. Can play that alongside a Visitor. Or I can just keep up the Chef's ability. So going Visitor into Teaching is fine. Should have maybe tap mana slightly differently to be able to attack with the token. And then... Don't mind Visitor pumping itself. And hit for one. The Spirit token is additional sacrifice fodder for the Chef. As they find another rabbit battery. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just too much value from the Black Green Enchantment deck. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing black mana, which could certainly come back to bite us, especially with a Massacre in hand. And I just need more lands in general, so this may be a little bit too speculative to keep. Although, yeah, any third land gives me Defense to Temple, which is quite good. Alright, this is better. And then, what do I keep? Tempted to keep Kami, maybe Ditch Ranger class and keep the removal in Binding. There's also an argument for getting rid of Binding, but I think it's just too important to have at least one. And then we start out with 2-drop, 3-drop, and hopefully plenty of enchantments to follow those. Second Kami could be nice. Opponent red-white. But no 2-drop. Still hesitant to play Tatsunari without making a frog right away. It's gonna be a wedding announcement. So red-white tokens. Maybe they do enough removal for Tatsunari here. And I can get away with it. Yeah, I guess we'll give it a try. With Gloom Shrieker to get it back, it's probably not too bad. And then ideally find land 4 to double spell. Another Kami into Visionary. Alright, perfect. Attack with the team. And Binding can deal with the announcements. Touch the Spirit Realm, Exiles, Toad Rider, but we still got our Toad. So, yeah, I think getting rid of the announcements over getting back Tatsunari seems like the play. 
I can hang on to Buseishu in hand to potentially use it as removal. Yeah, that seems reasonable too. And I guess Visionary can attack since we're not picking it back up. Opponent's at 5. And our opponent explodes. That was a fast one, thanks to Kami into Toad Rider. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Good interaction, a recursive creature. So it should be decent against a wide variety of decks. Usher of the Fallen points towards Meetook Massacre being effective. Portable Hole, clean answer for Kami, although Binding might unlock it here. For now, Ranger class. And Adlin. Might be a better target for Binding. Toad Rider is also attempting. Thing dealing with Adlin might still be more important for now. And then I'll probably keep the wolf back, even though I guess there's a decent chance I just want to play Toad Rider, level up Ranger class, and be attacking with my wolf. And Usher is still easy to clean up with Meat Hook Massacre. Another Usher, and another Antlin, fair enough. That is a reason to keep a creature back. So now the plan is going to be to wait until we can Massacre for four, which makes me less inclined to uh, play Toad Rider. So I can just level up a Ranger class, or I can block with Hive to prevent a bit of damage. And I don't need to play the Tapped Hive since I'll still be able to Massacre for 4 next turn regardless. I think preventing damage might be more important than leveling up Ranger class. So I'll keep the Hive on defense. Which can block an Usher. Right, Aspirants. If that puts a counter on Adlin, we might regret not playing a Tapped Hive, but they put a counter on the token. That's fair. So let's block with Hive. Potent boosts. And a massacre is going to be exactly that. Still have some nice leftovers. Alright, Adlin number three. Is she gonna make the difference? Do I want to massacre again just for Adlin? Might still be worth it. Uh, if I can play Toad Rider, do I have the mana to also block with Hive? I guess I do. So that could be another play we have available. So I wouldn't be able to level up Ranger class. Adlin attacks. So far so good, and now we get to start comboing off. Level up. Kami in the graveyard is excellent. Could go for another ranger class or teachings, both are fine. Let's go with uh, ranger class. And then instead of activating high, if I'll just play another class, level up. Tatsunari gets to attack. 
And it's not going to take very many turns to close out the game. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice looking hand. Turn one Warlock class, turn two level up. Couple options on three. Up against blue reds. Could be a tough matchup. Hope to mill some goodies. And yeah, Kami certainly counts. Do I want teachings or land? Kind of feeling the land here. And then a question is, do we play around something like Jory Disruption? Play a turn behind? Could be worth it. Just play a tapped hive for now. Don't really want to get my powerful three drops getting disrupted and our opponent's not doing much else. So sure. Right, Prismari Command can make a treasure. Could let them cast a turn for gold span. So that could be quite effective. Don't have a great answer to it in hand. Binding would be the perfect one. It's going to be expressive iteration instead. That's okay. Ideally, we play Toad Rider with another enchantment alongside it. Opponent finds a Demon Bolt with no targets. Opponent actually missed a land drop, so that's telling. So, yeah, defense the temple still seems like the play. Even if I don't end up using the plus one counters, it will still eventually level up into a powerful 2 2 flyer. And yeah, opponent finally playing disruption tapped. Ooh, and the hideous laughter was not expecting this to be a mill deck. Well, that certainly changes the uh, approach of this matchup. Don't want to play any self-mill effects any longer. Uh, Gloom Shrieker could still be effective later. For now, maybe Toad Rider plus Warlock class. Get on the board, even though a Sweeper could be in our future. And attack for two. The curve of our deck is pretty low. Let's see what they exiled. Yeah, there's the battle wiping the board. So we might just want to play Creature and Pump it with a Rising Star to dodge another damage-based removal effect. If I play this, I get to make a Monk. And we can pay 3 mana, still only a 4-4. But I guess same goes for the other creature in hand. So no real easy way to dodge another battle. Could get in there with Hive. I think that's going to be too slow of a clock. Don't really want to level up Warlock class if I can help it. So maybe another Defense the Temple still the way to go. If I play Gloom Shrieker, I can get back Toad Rider. But then do I really want to play it into another potential board wipe? And then I suppose I could put a stop on upkeep to potentially activate Hive to get the counters from my second chapter, if they have another sweeper here. Opponent keeps one on top. And iteration into another hideous laughter incoming, yep. So we're not gonna have many cards left. In fact, we don't have any. Well, that's a bummer. Not much more to say about that. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand is promising if we can hit a couple land drops, and then Binding will find even more land. Yeah, I'll try it. 
can always level up ranger class if we don't hit a third land right away. Alright, play that hive while we can. And given that we have backup Toad Riders, I have no qualms about playing it on curve. Opponent on maybe a Jeskai control deck. Hit for two, play Toad Rider, and then hopefully pick up another untapped land so we can make a frog token right away. Alright, Chori Disruption catches a Toad Rider. And iteration goes digging. Alright, so great window for Tatsunari into Warlock class. There we go. Opponent could be holding Spikefield Hazard or some other burn spell. Hit for two. Even have a creature land. So we can still apply pressure after board wipe. And if they play their Kirin, binding is the perfect answer since it doesn't require more mana. So hopefully they tap out for it. That's what they're maybe debating here. Opponent decides to pass. Okay, so a sweeper could be in our future. For now, could level up a Warlock class and play a Kami. Um, or we can level up a Ranger class as well. Definitely want to hit my land drops with a Warlock class, so we'll start there. Alright, Glade will do. And then... Yeah, I guess Ranger class. Maybe to spread out the wealth. Put the counter on the 3-3. Three, three. Which I don't care too much if it dies. Opponent's at 7. So now Hive is going to be a big part of our game plan. Opponent can make a treasure token here with uh, Magma Opus, perhaps. And it's going to be an unexpected windfall. So definitely it looks like a Hinata deck. And yeah, they might have the mana to play Hinata and a Magma Opus right away. And we'll see how they decide to time it. It's going to be a gold span instead. So six mana left over if it attacks, which I'm assuming it does. Binding still a reasonable answer there. Opponent may be figuring out if they can play Hinata and Magma Opus afterwards. Which they should be able to if they are careful with how they tap their mana. Although they wouldn't be able to do that at instant speed. So they wouldn't be able to tap down any of my lands or creatures. That's going to be a Galvanic iteration. Four mana left. For a Sunset Ravelry. Alright, that gains a lot of life and makes two tokens. That's fine. We'll uh, binding the gold span and go on our way. Could activate Tatsunari too here. And then counter on maybe the token once again to potentially dodge a uh, 4 damage sweeper. They can double block the wolf if they want to. That's fine. Bones at six. Warlock class puts them to five. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we managed to put them in an awkward spot. Their hand probably stacked with powerful instants like Magma Opus, but they weren't able to fully leverage them. So yeah, we faced a nice variety of tier 1 decks, including the Jeskai Control deck, the Naya Humans deck, 
which, by the way, is a reason to potentially include a few copies of Field of Ruin, since the Cave of the Frost Dragon especially is pretty effective against us, as we don't have a ton of huge flying creatures or reach creatures to block it. And while we're usually at the beat town, so not necessarily in need for Field of Ruin as an answer to opposing creature lands, against the Naya human stack specifically, we're usually on the receiving end, so Cave is certainly a way for the opponent to finish us off. So that's a matchup where I could see the benefit of a couple copies of Field of Ruin, even if it does make the mana a little bit less consistent. So yeah, overall pretty fun black-green enchantment mid-range deck, which uh, gets to play with a lot of the new cards. So if it seems appealing to you, it seems like a reasonable deck, at least right now in the meta game. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.